Yoga Bambomti Chini Tanchu Mungong So this was electronically filed by Superior Court of California County of Los Angeles on April the 4th, 2024 at 937 p.m. I just wanted to read the date and the time and the location. I'm going to skip some stuff, but I'm going to try my best to stay on the tidbits that um, mean something to the case. Attorneys for Plaintiff Grace Omar Kig. Omar K. I'm not sure. I apologize. Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. Grace Omar Kig. Mar Kig. I don't know. An individual plaintiff versus Christian Combs, an individual, Sean Combs, an individual, and John and Jane Doe's 1 through 10, and ABC Corporation's 1 through 10. This is a demand for jury trial. The complaints for damages are 1. Assault. Number 2. Battery. 3. SA. Number 4. Premises liability. Number 5. Aiding and abetting. Number 6. Intentional inflictional, inf infliction of emotional distress. Number 7. Neglect infliction of emotional distress. Plaintiff Grace Omar K. Plaintiff, by and through her attorney of record, alleges as follows. The parties. Number 1. Plaintiff Grace Omar Kate. Here in Plaintiff, thank you. If you really stick to just saying Plaintiff, is a European Caucasian female who worked as a stewardess in the yachting industry since 2018. I wonder if they going to clear up why that's important. <laughs> I'm nosing and small stuff like that. Be like, okay. 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 Number two, plaintiff's love of yachting started at an early age and was the foundation of which she had built her career. Maybe that's why. Because ain't none of my people really exposed to no yachting, especially not at no young age. <laughs> Number three, through yachting, plaintiff had traveled the world, met many new friends and colleagues, and enjoyed a very successful career. Number four, throughout her career, plaintiff has always worked well in teams and receives high praises and great feedback from her managers and colleagues. Number five, plaintiff also consistently received exemplary re reviews from her clients for her excellent customer service as well as glowing references over the past few years. I'm just giggling a little bit because I love how these lawyers making this sound like like if you don't know nothing about nothing about nothing just guess <laughs> like what she did if i was like a waitress and i walked past a table and something had fallen and i picked it up and said they were like oh my goodness thank you so much your customer service is amazing that's what they just told you right there like yeah you do a good job but they making it seem like she was president ceo coo like <laughs> I was about to say one more thing, but number six. <laughs> Plaintiff has consistently received promotions and has never been rejected for any position she has applied for. Seven, prior to her being SA'd by defendant Christian Combs herein after defendant C. Combs, Plaintiff planned to work the entirety of her career in hospitality and the yachting industry. Unfortunately, those plans have been derailed due to the trauma plaintiff continues to have as a result of the assault. I am not in any way a victim blamer. What I am though <laughs> is a true stater. If anywhere in this lawsuit, the plaintiff def uh, alleges that she was aware of previous incidences, okay, of other girls having horrible things done to them, allegedly, in her opinion. <sighs> Jesus. Yeah, I just feel some kind of way. It's, it's okay until it happens to who? To you. Number eight, Defendant C. Combs is a 25-year-old auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. I'm going to keep my opinions... Uh, about this to myself, I am. I am. 
I am. Number nine, unfortunately, as the saying has it, the apple does not far, fall far from the tree. Number 10, defendant Sean Combs, defendant S. Combs, who has also been accused of several acts of S-A-R-S-V, and I don't even know if I can say that one, a slip in the mickey, <laughs> among un- other deplorable conduct, is the father of, the, of defendant C. Combs, who has seemingly taken after his father and the family business a reckless partying rugging women can i say it like that because i really don't rugging others because let me not say women because i'm yeah i'm aware sv and other illegal conduct number 11 specifically defendant c combs is the second child of billionaire defendants s combs and his later ex-partner kim potter I- i'm gonna stop just one second just one second just one second has anybody checked on them twins i don't know what happened honestly to their mother but when I look at these celebrities I see no loyalty to anyone they were twins they were girls they were young they were teens they seem to fail Number 12, upon information and belief, defendant C. Combs resides in the city of Beverly Hills, California, in Los Angeles uh, County, California. 13, defendant Sean Combs here and after defendant S. Combs is a rapper and a record executive popularly known by his stage names Puff Daddy, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love, or love when a motherfucker start to tell you the names that they identify by when they start to demand that you call them one thing or other and they legit got a name like you you told me a name when you first came around that's the name i know by i'm gonna respect you enough to remember that one but when you start demanding and you start to changing that shit because you feel like you're so powerful and now you this person we all got different fucking personalities if i start walking around every other week every other month every other year saying that today i'm the greatest and i decide you're gonna call me this name that's when i start to back up that's not the kind of person i want involved in my life when i promise you and i tell you i do not care about celebrities Celebrities, I will walk right past. None of them hold no high standard in my life unless you are one of two people. And I'm going to just give you one name. And it's, it's going to shock my people. Lauren Hill. Miss Lauren Hill, if you ever walk past me, <laughs> I promise you, <laughs> I will be your bestest friends. Please, oh, please, oh, please just talk to me. Can you hold my hand? Can you, can you give me a hug? <laughs> and I don't hug people. But she the only one. I don't know. I got something about voices. It's, it, it's not because of celebrity status. It's not because I'm monetary. I don't give a fuck about them. They're not going to give me no money. What the fuck do I give a damn about you because you have money? You don't care on the day that I die about me. I don't care about you on a regular basis. Now, the thing is, is I am nosy. And of course, I'm going to know all your tea because that's what's out there. They're not going to report on the normal person unless it's something huge. So all I'm stuck with is saying a same old raggedy ass celebrities over and over so of course that's who i'm gonna be looking at interested in oh what the fuck are you doing that mm-hmm, okay but i'm gonna mind my business because i legit don't care like i don't truly listen to a lot of music i do not watch tv i do not watch movies so celebrities as far as on tv i dare i don't even know them i have no idea who people are i live in a show i live in a bubble but singers you know you get exposed i know a little bit here and there and puppy been around forever but Puffy will always be Puffy because who the fuck care about what else he changed his name to? And when he came out, I remember Puff Daddy and then I remember Puffy and that's where the fuck I stopped at because I don't give a fuck what you want to be called. You look a little shady. And when I started to see the energy on that show he had, what the fuck was the show called? With the motherfuckers walking across the bridge with cheesecake and shit like that. How dumb. You mean you want it that bad that on TV you will degrade and diminish yourself while this man sits here and acts like he's God? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Of course he's going to act like the way he acts. Of course he's going to do the things that he does. He's already getting it from one end on the side of the people who are doing it with him. But then you want to actually bow down and give him the illusion? (laughs) Come on, Kanye. I see Kanye just a little special. Kanye then went off the deep end. I don't think he got none of this stuff too, too, too much going on. I wouldn't think so. Who knows, though? 
who, who knows? <laughs> but this right here, I will never give another person the praise to make them think that they are my God. People actually made him, I'm sorry, he had the audacity to change his name to love. Of course, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I lie all the time and shit like that. I'm wrong, but I'm right, I'm right. Number 14, Defendant S. Combs became famous in the early 1990s with his record label, Bad Boy Records. He rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly, regularly, <laughs> regularly <laughs> revered as a hip hop mogul and top rap hip hop producer in the industry. When you have money and drugs and you can just sit and do drugs all day long and then use your money to make music, you can create some amazing things. People get high all the time. <laughs> and then you got the other biggest things back with you. People who don't want to give their best beats to nobody else, but they want to give it to you because you have money. Not because you're the greatest anything. Because you're going to tell me Puffy is the greatest everything? No. No. <laughs> He got about three, four, five good songs that I can sing from beginning to end. Other than that, I can't tell you a whole fucking puppy album. I wish you would put a whole puppy album on. Mm -mm. I don't even care that he sing with all the other things. Wouldn't that be the... No. No, he got a couple of songs mixed up in there. He can't dance. He not cute. He is not cute. He look funny. He looks scary. Um, yeah. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No, you won't. <laughs> And, and people will lie. People will lie and be on TV and doing everything, crawling across on your knees. Please just give me a chance to be able to breathe the air you breathe. Fuck that. His breath probably stink. Oh, Jesus. I wonder what puppy breath smell like. I apologize for the digressions. Um, I don't know where I start. Okay, number 15. Upon information and belief, defendant S. Combs resides in the city of Beverly Hills, California, in Los Angeles County, California. Number 16. The relevant period defendants John and Jane Doe's. Why? Oh, okay. I'm going to need y'all to put an apostrophe. I think it was supposed to have an apostrophe. Jane Doe's. <laughs> 1 through 10 are currently unknown individuals and or employees who aided and or abetted in the commission of conduct complained of herein and who and or who either acted within the scope of their employment. Defendants ratify and ratified, embraced and added to this conduct as parties engaged in discovery. Plaintiff retains the right to amend the complaint to add these individual employees by names. I wonder would they ever include the bartender who served the drinks that got the drugs put in them that then they had drank, allegedly, like from the past. Like, I, I, I don't know if she worked on this boat before, but I believe she's a bartender. <laughs> and I promise you, I... I, I these people do not be seeing no problem in shit. Like the, I keep seeing this security guard who talking all this shit. I, I don't understand. He talking all this shit. Does he have immunity? He sat outside the door. Okay. Okay. Number 17, during the re relevance period defendants a b c corps one through ten are currently unknown entities who employed plaintiff or aided and or abetted in the commission of conduct complained of herein as the parties engage in discovery plaintiff retains the right to amend the complaint to add these entities or in the individuals by name she thinks she's about to get millions and billions gazillions <laughs> I just think that. I just feel that wholeheartedly, allegedly, in my opinion. I think these people, well, let me not say that part because this could have been worse. So let me not say that. Um, I don't really care what she sued, who she sued, what she get. I really don't. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip over the jurisdiction and we're going to skip down to the facts common to all causes of action. Number 19, in or around July 2022, Grace O. Mars. And then they say she was going to be called the plaintiff. Okay. Uh, 2022, plaintiff who was working on Victorious, a super yacht built by Akya and owned and operated by Frazier. 20, plaintiff worked as a temporary 
second stewardess for the company Equium FW049IC. What do a second stewardess do? I just want y'all to reflect on the <laughs> glowing resume that the <laughs> lawyers put out in the, in the part we just read. I'm not knocking nobody. I don't do nothing. I'm a waitress. Like, I'm the little, I clean toilets. Like, whatever you want to say, I did. I don't do nothing right now. I would have my lawsuit set up the same exact way. I'm not knocking it. I'm just laughing because I already knew that she did something. I thought she was a boss at the... I thought she was a bartender. I don't know what the stewardess do, so she still could be a bartender, to be honest. But I'm just, because what did he say? <laughs> she got such glowing reviews. <laughs> I can't. I can't with the bullshit. Like, come with the facts. Don't come with the bullshit. That's how I be. And when I read the extra shit, I be like, you really put some ink on the paper just to put that. Okay. Okay. Number 21. Plaintiff worked in her temporary position for a month. On the victorious, then was subsequently offered a permanent position due to her professionalism, passion for the job, and great customer service skills. Number 22, in or about 20, um, September 2022, Blaine said, Blaine said, that's what I get for being smart. <laughs> Plaintiff had been a part of a dedicated team at the Monaco Boat Show. Task was selling charters for Victorious to high net worth clients such as Seacombs and Nescombs. You know you wasn't selling shit to his son. You know he the only one paying for that shit. Y'all is horrible, I swear to goodness. I don't understand how they was able to come out and really smile in people's faces thinking that they are so great to this earth. They've done so much for the people here that they deserve their riches here on earth. They're, what, what, do the, what do the people say they get? The 22 virgins or something like that? They think they deserve to be able to violate every human on this earth to make their own uh, nasty pleasures come to fruition. And then come out in the public eye. Like, might donate a pallet of water here. Or donate two hundred or twenty thousand dollars to this chick. They, they doing these great things, so why not? Why, why are you looking at them shameful? Like, all of the things that they've done in the dark. Mind your business, because they deserve to be just swimming in their own worldly desires. What the fuck? I don't understand. That's, that's the, I don't understand how people can do stuff like this. Like, the one that's in jail, Kelly. Uh, he had houses. Just I just don't understand the thought process. People are horrible. <laughs> Moral of my story. I'm sorry. Okay. 23. In December 2022, Plaintiff and her team were advised that the yacht had been successfully chartered for the 2022 holiday period. So y'all did a good job. Good job, boo. Good job, boo. Number 24, plaintiff changed her personal holiday family plans to accommodate the charter service and flew to St. Martin to prepare the yacht for service. Was we supposed to give her a cookie because she worked on a holiday? Calling all the people who work in hospitals. <laughs> Number 25, plaintiffs soon learned the client who chartered the yacht was defended as Combs and his family. Because y'all did such a good job. Number 26, defendant S. Combs leased the yacht and had full control of the staff and premises of the yacht. No, no, boo. No, no, boo. What you mean got full control? I don't like that sentence because if you chartered, if you rented out a restaurant that I worked in, that don't mean you got full control of shit, just so you're aware, except for the space. You paid for this, so technically, maybe. But shit, even if we wanted you out, we could trespass the fuck out of you. So come on now. Come on now. I don't like that sentence. <laughs> Number 27. Although plaintiff was used to working in discreet and VIP environments, this was her first time. This was one of her first times working with an A-list celebrity. Because of this, plaintiff and the rest of the team knew I'm sorry, the rest of the team assigned to the yacht were determined to make the holidays special for defendant S. Combs and his family. Let me just ask y'all a question. Y'all think there's a lot of people out there who train to work, uh, not train, who has already worked with a list celebrities on yachts. You think it's like a, a whole group of um, teams out there? I kind of do think it is. And I think once you run through uh, 
uh, I don't even know how to put it. Like, um, <laughs> once you do something so so uh, illegal to a couple of them, you might not even have to do it all to a couple of them. I I, I kind of see like they would start going to the groups of people who maybe do the B list celebrities, and then the C list celebrities, and then the ones that just getting into the game young naive but 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 they've been exposed to yachting for a very long time and they probably have some rich parents to the fact where they know how to act as if they know how to be around rich people because you know people like me don't know how to be around rich people i don't value rich people so i am a person you would consider not um eloquent enough (laughs) to be at like a (laughs) a private dinner (laughs) not to say i do not know how to act professional i just don't respect them enough that if something happened that i was uncomfortable with like cat williams said the people started doing crack cocaine in front of their face i got a clue i was at a neighbor's house and i think i am not sure I just think, I literally just think, I got a feeling, and from some of the stuff she said to somebody else, was there, I think they might have quite possibly been going to, they, they, they might have been planning on doing crack or some sort of hard drug once I left. Like, not even at the time, they wasn't going to peer pressure, they wasn't going to even offer. I think that they might have, I think she might have just asked her, did you remember to get it? And I think she was talking about drugs. I have not been to that lady house since. I barely talk to her when I see it in passing. And we see each other on a regular basis. I will not step foot back in her door because I'm scared. It might have been crack cocaine in it. And that's how I would act if I was around a famous person. See, some of these motherfuckers, like a cat, William, he'll just go ahead and, you know, go on with the meeting. Meeting over. I don't care how much money was on the table. And I need the money. Please, oh, please, oh, please, and thank you. I got to go. I'm scared. I just don't know. What if you take this hit of crack and you die and they say it was me? What if you go crazy and they turn you into a zombie? What if? What if? You know what happens? I don't find out because I ain't going to stay around. My fight or flight is too strong. I'm not cut out for that type of shit. My mouth is reckless. And, 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 and I tell people all the time, the only goal I have is to make it home at night. You over there doing crack? Man, we might not make it. We might not make it. Okay, you definitely not if you need my help. <laughs> but we not going to make it. Okay, I damn sure don't know where I left off. Oh, okay, I do remember why I went off on that tirade. <laughs> Number 26, defendant as Combs leased the yacht and had full control of the staff at the premises of the yacht. 27, although plaintiffs, was worse to... Oh, no, I didn't read that whole thing, didn't I? Okay, I ain't gonna read that one again. Number 28, for the duration of the trip... Plaintiff was assigned the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift along with one other crew member. This shift, commonly known as the late shift, was... Oh, shit. This shift, commonly known as the late shift, was very busy. Yes, yes, yes. And I wonder who made the schedules because i might have been the setup too whoever set you up like that boo i would make sure they included into one of them john and jane does late shift duties included dinner and drink service for the clients for the entire 12 hour period dinner and drink service had to be carried out with minimum staff support or backup during the night shift once shift since only two individuals were assigned I, that that makes no sense to me because that kind of crew or kind of position in general would seem like the afternoon to night shift would be the busiest shift not necessarily the day shift um especially for drinks and food like that during the day they would be out on excursions or sleep because they hung over because they sit one of them classes that had a little bit of extra drugs and allegedly in somebody else's opinion that bad. <laughs> Um, number 30, although defendant S. Combs was ty- typically on the yacht, his sons, defendant C. Combs and Justin Combs, were staying in a luxury villa nearby, but joined their father aboard the yacht most evenings. 31, during the second week of the charter service, there was a significant amount of partying and drug use, which caused the guests to stay up throughout the night. That's disgusting. I don't understand. These kids is going to say, my daddy made me though. My pa, these is grown adults. Y'all had years after you became adults to not turn out to be like this and do this type of shit. 
they just the greatest and why shouldn't again they be able to satisfy their worldly desires at anyone's expense number 32 the makeup of the yacht quickly evolved from just defendants as combs and his family to include a constant rotation of suspected ew s workers and other a-list celebrities such as french montana and oh my god an actor cuba gunji y'all is disgusting i'm not gonna say anything okay i'm gonna just keep my opinions to myself <clears throat> 33 defendant as combs turned what was sold as a wholesome family excursion into a hedonistic environment And, and, and at that point, did you leave? At that point, I'm putting in sick time. I'm putting in vacation. I'm putting in, look, get me the fuck off this boat time. Because I didn't sign up for this. M my sense of morals, respect for just myself to not be in dangerous positions. Because you don't know what will happen. Overwhelmingly exceeds anybody's recommendations and good jobs boo and um, paychecks I understand I am poor <laughs> and there's a reason I'm poor <laughs> because there are so many things that I wouldn't do just to get money I hate to say it because I know it seems as if I'm but I just don't understand it's like watching a horror movie everybody talks to the screen and says don't go in there but you always go in there <laughs> I don't understand 33 uh, no, I'm sorry, 34. According to plaintiff, it resulted in an unexpected increase, increased, increase in workload for her and her colleagues, as well as unwanted exposure to unlawful drug use, S work, and general chaos. If you ever worked in a hospital and you walked into one of the rooms, one of the stairwells or anything like that and saw one of your co-workers humping on one of your other co-workers, you would, you would just be okay with it? If you seen them snorting cocaine in the bathroom, I'm, I'm just saying, you, you, you would just be okay with it. It's, it's not okay in a, in, a, in a normal workplace, but okay. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But Number 35, it also created an extremely hazardous environment. For example, guests often demanded drink service until 6 a.m. Staff was often treated with disrespect. Suspected S workers were sprawled out unconscious about the yacht. And it was difficult to distinguish which bottles of alcohol were laced with drugs and which bottles we're not. Hmm. Okay. 36. It is important to note that as a bartender, plaintiff understands the impact of alcohol and the likelihood that a person would generally would not generally become intoxicated following one mixed drink. Because of this, plaintiff found it very suspicious that after one shot of De Leon tequila. Is that how you say that? I don't know. I don't drink that shit. Or one mixed drink. Various women on the yacht would be falling over themselves. Panicking. Huh? You say you've seen women. <clears throat> My stomach hurt. <laughs> After one shot of De Leon tequila or one mixed drink, mixed drink, various women on the yacht would be falling over themselves, panicking or passing out. This led plaintiff to reasonably believe that the alcohol given to these women were likely laced with drugs. 37, plaintiff was aware that Rodney Jones Mr. Jones, a producer who was employed to work on the Love album, Off the Grid, was required to be on standby for musical recordings often late into the night. 38. The Love album, Off the Grid, is the fifth studio album by the American rapper and recorded producer John Diddy Combs, released on September 15, 2023. He just came out with an album. <laughs> Y'all listen to that shit, didn't y'all? 
Y'all had favorite songs? I did not know. I did not know. I did not know. His ass is not out there still trying to... I want y'all to confess your sins in my, um, in my, um, comments. I want you to confess your sins if you listen to this shit. It's your fault we blaming you, so you got to confess down there. You got to take this abuse. Now, don't confess no other sins. I'm just talking about if you listen to this album. All the rest of that shit, you keep it to yourself. We did not want to know. <laughs> Number 39. Mr. Jones was accepted as an extended member of the service staff and spent time with plaintiff at the service bar and piano room where he played the piano. Number 40, on or about the early morning of December 28, 2022, the evening shift started as normal. At or about 5 a.m., plaintiff was messaged on the on-duty phone that defendant Seacombs would be joining the yacht by tender. A smaller craft that runs back and forth from a larger yacht and used for servicing and providing support and entertainment to a private or charter yacht. Defendant Seacombs wanted to be brought over to Victorious to record in the yacht's makeshift recording studio with Mr. Jones. Y'all ever listen to any of his music? That's your next confession. Okay, you can confess if you listen to his music as well. I couldn't tell you if I ever heard one. If Maybe if he didn't spin on somebody else. I have no idea. I have no idea if I've ever heard one of these reggae ass songs. I am sure that they're not my cup of tea, so I'm going to just go ahead and freely say, allegedly, in my opinion, these raggedy ass songs. But you could pass, if you was a child Combs fan, and you take this abuse too, you take this abuse because you should be shaved, you should be shaved. You knew you seen some red flags, and you was over there singing this song? Nope. Nope. You had this man thinking he was great, <laughs> and we still trying to figure out what's so great about him. Number 41, although it was not unheard of for defendant C. Combs to come aboard at such a late hour, he usually stayed at his dwelling offshore overnight, particularly when there was no party on board or any given night. Number 42, defendant C. Combs arrived in the tender and was heavily intoxicated. Plaintiff suspects suspects. Defendant C. Combs was intoxicated from a mixture of narcotics and alcohol. Mm, mm, mm. I wouldn't even want him to come close to me. Oh boy, don't you touch me with them drugged up pants. Ew. I don't know what it is, but drugs really creep me out. Have you seen a cracky? <laughs> Number 43. Upon entering the recording studio, Defendant C. Combs immediately started ordering that tequila shots be poured from a bottle of alcohol he may have brought onto the yacht but was he laying them bars i'm confused why was he drinking shots if you laying them bars number 44 ironically defendant c combs was playing cassie's me and you <laughs> was playing in the background cassie was an artist under S. Combs and was his former love interest, who also accused S. Combs of serious S and mental A. 45. In the studio, defendant C. Combs asked that plaintiff bring the shot to the recording studio Sunday, and plaintiff obliged as she was the only serving steward at the time. I used to work at 7 Eleven. If I ever worked the overnight shift by myself, I wouldn't be working. The store would be closed. Why? Because my safety is more important <laughs> than a check. Literally. Literally. And I had the best boss in the world. He wouldn't do that to me anyway. So I was able to hold that enough respect for myself. Because if he respected me enough to know it was too dangerous, I felt better knowing that it's too dangerous for me to work by myself. Fuck it. No, but you right. This right here shows to me a dangerous situation you're in the room with men who you know mm, my fight or flight i'm a scaredy cat and i have stranger danger so i've always had it i've always had it so i think I, I i think i just think differently than other people like i was a kid that you really would be sick of because if you gave me to any other person i would scream as if you were killing me 
But now I'm realizing as an adult, I really still have stranger danger. If a stranger comes up to me and tries to, I am terrified. I don't know what it is, why I'm scared of people. I'm terrified. So maybe it's just me. Um, and maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 46, plaintiff noticed immediately that he was particularly attentive with her. Which she considered very inappropriately. I'm running. I'm running. Why you touch me? What you say? Huh? Wait a minute. I hear something in the back. I gotta go real quick. I'll be right back. That's my story all the time. I'll be right back. I'll be in the boot. In the what she said it was in that boot. <laughs> Trying to go back. The child. What she said it was called. I can't even know what it was called now. Okay, let me stop because I was gonna go back and look, but I'm not. <sighs> How, I'm sorry, 47, however, plaintiff began to become concerned when he insisted that she take shots of the tequila he may have brought on board the yacht. I wonder how long he'd been taking drugs if he was able to drink some of it and it, it was laced with stuff that made anybody else pass out. What the fuck is wrong with y'all insides? Y'all is just taking anything. That is crazy that so many people are just druggies and it's... I, I don't know. And y'all respect these people? <laughs> 48, under pressure and what? Wait up. I think I might make this a two-parter. What page am I on? I'm on page seven. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know when I get frustrated if you didn't watch any of my other videos. <sighs> I don't know if I'm going to make it. Okay, let me see how long I got. All right, yeah, this is a little long. I'm uh, I wanna easily be able to edit this, so I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> gather my shit together. I just gotta get my mind right. I gotta get my life right. I just gotta I'll be okay. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna read the second one. I'm gonna post them together, so it won't take you too long. You'll see them back to back. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a two-parter. I'll see you in a second. Bye.